Welcome, my name's Graham Mansfield and my subject is the student voice. And particularly, we're going to be thinking about how the School of Computing perceives the student voice and see if there's really any scope for improving the way in which we listen to the student voice. I was smitten on the course that I'm doing for the PGCHPE by th this concept of the student voice. The literature talks about all kinds of student voices and, and describes quite a few ways in which it is captured. But what I wanted to do was to explore how we within the School of Computing, both staff and students, perceive that student voice. So I, I undertook a survey and I'll point out straight away that really that survey is not representative but it gives us some interesting points that we can perhaps use for some further study. Uh, some of the things from the literature to bring out here, Fielding says that the student voice really ought to be a cooperative venture for improving the educational experience but, he says, it's often used as a mechanism for accountabilities, a stick to beat the lecturers with. All sorts of techniques, uh, surveys obviously are very well known and uh, very uh, much used. Other things like making audio recordings and video recordings, sort of uh, uh, video diaries, or even sending the students off to make their own video about uh, their experience has been used uh, to some good effect. Rumpus uh, points out to us that uh, the student voice cannot always be directly related to the work of the individual lecturer. And if you only got to think about the National Student Survey, for example, to, to realise that the results that come back are not easily, in fact it's almost impossible, mm. to relate them to the individual lecturer. Indeed, we have trouble relating it to an individual award. So that also has a lot of resonance. One of the interesting things that I found really was from the sound out. They list a, a huge number of scenarios in which the student voice can be captured. And I just wondered, having seen that, whether our staff and students would pick out very many of these at all. So I decided to uh, engage in a survey. I uh, selected at random 10 members of staff. My selection technique needs a lot of work because all I did was walk down the corridor in the middle of the <laughs> summer holiday and knocked on the door. If the member of staff was present, they were asked. If they weren't, I couldn't ask them. And, uh, so we ended up with 10 members of staff. And uh, I sent out a questionnaire using SurveyMonkey to every single School of Computing student. And in about three days, I got 22 responses and then cut it off uh, because I needed to get on with the assignment. The strengths of this is that although my selection technique wasn't terribly good, I, I did get an interesting uh, variation of roles within the school. From the students, um, there's a little bit of a problem really because as you can see from the representation of levels, we've got no students at level 6 who have responded and only two at level 5. So again, we're not getting a representative sample here and that is certainly one of the, the limitations here. The three unknown in terms of unknown sex and unknown level is because they provided me with a student number which I then used to reference back to get the information about them but the student number wasn't recognised on thesis. One of the other problems with the survey was that as well as it not being guaranteed to be representative is that I didn't record the interviews with the staff in part because I didn't want to intimidate my colleagues but also the main problem here is that when I wanted to go back and review some of the, the things that had been said, my notes weren't particularly useful. So it gave me the bare bones of what I recorded by hand, but it could have been um, a little better had the interviews been recorded. So from those interviews and the surveys, I've uh, drawn up some findings. The first of which was that I asked the staff and the students to define, in their own words, what the student voice is. And uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of commonality when, for example, on the left-hand side we've got the student saying that the student voice is a representation of uh, their opinions and thoughts and ideas and perceptions and so on. And the staff also considered it to be an expression of similar things. What's a little bit interesting though is that the students said that it was a voice that is representative of all the students and yet others were saying well it's only for those that are participating. 
And again, the staff were also saying, look, it's a common voice, the collective view. But there really is a very big question mark um, about whether this is truly representative. A member of staff said, people who shout loudest who get heard, and those that don't speak, the silent majority. These are the people, perhaps, whose views are not being represented by those that do speak up. And then we get a really interesting perception here, a contrasting perception. The students saw the student voice as the power to change things and to affect what happens, whereas the staff perceive it as a request to change things. And so that's really quite a, a, a contrasting view there, which um, for me is really quite telling. I asked how the student voice is captured formally. And you can see uh, here in green, we've got the staff responses in red, the student responses, and the vast majority of respondents came up with the module evaluation forms. And I'd have been really surprised if that wasn't the case. Only staff members identify program committees. And our experience in the School of Computing is that uh, not terribly many of the student representatives attend these meetings. And when they do, not very many of them have got a large representation from the students. Personal tutor meetings, again, staff think that those are uh, a great opportunity for capturing the student voice. Students don't recognise them. And then when you find that the staff say, but personal tutoring doesn't work, then perhaps that explains why so few of the students think it a an opportunity for expressing their student voice. Informal expressions, well, a lot of staff and a few students identified informal dialogue, but again, not very many of other opportunities. In fact, too many of them said, I don't know how we can get the student voice in other ways. Problems that are, are uh, highlighted by the respondents, problems in capturing the student voice, well, it's not representative. Actually, capturing it is difficult and module evaluation forms have problems and a few other problems that were identified. All of them said it's important, but their, their range of responses go from, shall we say, the, uh, the professional, I want to improve, through to the pragmatic, where students are our customers and they're paying a lot of money, right down to perhaps the cynical, um, it's expedient, uh, we've got to keep our reputation and so on. Staff say that the student voice influences their teaching and learning activities, primarily in terms of adjusting delivery, the module content and the blackboard content. And then there were a few other things that were identified. Whereas the students, who you hope are going to perceive that their teaching and learning experience has been affected, most of them said, I don't know how it has. Um, the really interesting one is right down there at the end, money in the bank. Somebody, because of uh, a student suing the, the university, ended up with uh, a donation in the bank. Findings. What we really need to do is to combat these findings by, and these are my strategies for this, by working towards a converging view of the student voice, getting away from these uh, contrasting views of power versus request to a cooperative student-led enhancement of the student experience. And I think for me the way that we can do this within the school is to develop mechanisms for capturing the representative student voice so that we get a better view, that we can foster a culture of in-course discussion because a lot of the respondents were saying that the end of module surveys were really just too late. They don't affect the students when the students need the changes to happen. And, and so we really need to get to the interpersonal in-course discussions so that the changes can occur. Thank you.